and welcome to Yarn Lane. Hooray. Oh my God, look at what I've got here. So I'll let you into a little secret. We lost the animals. They were all delivered to the studio on Thursday. Couldn't find them. Um, they were all, sorry, I've covered my mic. Right, can you hear me now? I've been covered. So um, they disappeared, but I found them. I found them all in a box. It was so exciting when I opened the box. They were all like looking at me like, where have you been? Where have you been? So I quickly shut the box. They didn't escape. But I didn't realise when um, I was sorting out the show and talking to the designer about how big they were. But aren't they lovely? Look. Anyway, welcome to Yarn Lane. So let's just get all the all the housekeeping stuff out of the way to start. We've got fantastic postage offer for you. It's across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. So if you buy anything on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in the first 12 days of um, December, so anything from the 1st to the 12th, you have to buy it something for six days. It'll have to be six consecutive days, but any six days over the 1st to the 12th, you get completely free postage for the whole of January. That's amazing, isn't it? So if you're thinking, oh, there's five days and I've bought something each day, it's really worth you buying something for the sixth day. Or if you've bought four days, it's even worth buying. So anything from the 1st to 12th, we're on the 2nd already, so you've still got time. So if you bought something yesterday and you buy something today, you've only got another four days, what happens then is we will give you a special code and then you can buy um, anything in January, free postage, all the time the whole of January, which is so worth it. And the, the offer counts across both Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. So if you bought something on the today from Yarn Lane, tomorrow from Sewing Street, and as long as it's, it doesn't have to be six days in a row, but it does have to be from the 1st to the 12th. So it's fantastic, isn't it? So if you bought a gift voucher, you know, from Yarn Lane, look at those. We've now got Yarn Lane gift vouchers. I'd quite like one of those, actually. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Who would love a girl yarn lane gift voucher? So anyway, that's the housekeeping, postage and packing, fantastic special offer out of the way. So um, if you want to order us, this is your first time visiting Yarn Lane, you can order um, on the website. You can order on the phone line. The number's there on the screen, 0800 4700 600. It's um, a UK call centre, so, and they're really, really nice people and really helpful. So you can buy any, um, you can phone them. If you want to buy off the website, if you go onto the website, if you click on, go onto yarnlane.com, if you click on watch live, all the products that are on today's show, as you can see, they're already there and they're already selling. And they are all there. So it just makes it easy. You don't have to search around the website there. So if you click on watch live, they're all there below and you can click on them to buy online or you can buy over the phone. These are a fantastic price and they are already starting to sell. So we will keep a tally of who's the most popular as we go along. At the moment, it is, it's the Teddy. At the moment, it's Toggle Ted. So we'll start with him. So let's, I'm gonna have, have to move myself a little bit of space. You can't even see them all. So let me talk, so these are crochet, but these are super chunky crochet. If you haven't done crochet before, this is brilliant way to start because the yarn is so chunky. Well, the one thing that people often say to me is, oh, and I can find it really, really hard to count. But because the yarn is so big, it's easy to count. So let me unpack one of the kits. This is Toggle Ted. Now, these designs, these beautiful nitty crisps, all designed by Mandy Cameron. And she designs these, which, which is a friend of Claire, who is our demonstrator, you're going to meet in a little bit. And she does all the pattern testing for these. So she knows that they're right, which is fantastic. So in your big, 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 big box, you get all the stuffing you need. So you don't have to worry about finding that. You get this massive ball of blanket yarn. So you can see how chunky it is. So um, should we get it out? And we can have a look at it. Really chunky. And obviously, each obviously each kit has the right color yarn that you need this is a lovely gray because it's the teddy but it's really thick like super chunky blanket yarn it's beautifully soft you get um the black yarn that you need for the eyes you get the full pattern and you also get the two crochet hooks that you need because you need two different sizes for the different parts of it um the instructions really easy to understand they're all written in uk terminology and there's also 
Um, an explanation here, if you're only used to US terminology, there's a translation for you. These are all pattern checked and tested by Claire, who's going to demonstrate them for us today, so you know that they work. But for beginners, honestly, these are fantastic because they're easy to count the stitches. So I've had a lot of you messaging on the fan page going, oh, I like crochet, but it's the counting. Well, it's easy. Claire's going to start with us in a minute, right at the beginning of how we start off and then the more sort of complex pieces. But you know what's great about these kits is that you could buy one because you want one yourself. You could buy a kit as a gift or you buy the kit as a gift, you give it to somebody and you say, and when you finished it, can I have it back, please? So it's like double gift. It's like buying a present for yourself, but you get someone else to do it. So we have got seven different animals for you today. So this is the first one, Toggle Ted. I'm going to move his kit. One moment. I'm going to move him out of the way. So here's Toggle Ted. I mean, look how big he is, you can see, compared to me. <laughs> look at his little feet. Oh, he's just like, you just want to play with them, don't you? So there's the teddy. And then here is Ollie the elephant. Look at his massive ears. Ollie the elephant. He's got massive ears. And the way that they've been designed is a really clever way so that there aren't sort of separate pieces. So the feet are all crocheted in in one go. So it makes them much safer for children. All of the features, they're um, knitted, they're crocheted or embroidered on, so they're not separate pieces, so they're really good for children. He's got such chunky ears. So that's Ollie the elephant, okay? Um, so let's do the sloth, the sloth. This is Elliot's favorite. Look at him, isn't he lovely? He's got his hands elastic band together, so I'm gonna take them off. But look, he's got fingers. Every single kit is $24.99. Remember, you get everything in the kit you need. Look, isn't he lovely? Shall I, un shall I un elastic band him? I'll put them in my pocket so I don't lose them for later. Because um, they all want those back on. But he's got, he's got claws. Look, isn't he lovely? So, you can't keep him, Elliot. You can't keep him. But what you could do, if you wanted to hang him off a bed or something, you could sew his hands together and then he could hang off something. Isn't he lovely? So that's the sloth. Um, love the giraffe. The sloth is called Sammy. Sammy the sloth. This one is Jeffrey. I love Jeffrey. He's massive, isn't he? He's, at, he's really huge. If you go on the website, I've put all the details on there about what you get in the kit, the finished size of them all in centimetres and inches. Everything you need is there, but if you want to know, know all the crochet hooks are in there and everything. But if, so all the, there is nothing else you need actually, because the stuffing is in there, the yarn and the crochet hooks and instructions. If you want to know like specific measurements and stuff, I've lifted all that, but isn't this lovely? Cause it's, um, it's a really, it's a multicolored yarn. It's so it changes colour as you crochet. No, he's not a super bright, but look at him. And he's got a little tail as well. But he's so, they, this yarn is so squishy. I think that's why it's called blanket yarn. I really like this one. So nice. So that's Jeffrey. Um, then we've got Rosie Rabbit. Oh, I love Rosie Rabbit. She's so, she's sweet. She's definitely a girl. She's got a little pink nose, a little white bunny. I mean, she's a bunny, isn't she? She's not a rabbit. She's a bunny. But she's really cute. This is fantastic for a baby, isn't it? For me, that's like a baby toy. What a lovely, but they are so soft. So that's Rosie Rabbit. And then let's do Sophia the Unicorn. Now look at her. Her um, mane and her nose and her tail and her feet are in multicolored shades of pink, blue, yellow and white. She's got like really twiddly mane and she's got a horn and ears. So if you love unicorns, look at her. I'm going to just do a little 360 for you. Right, last one. Squish. Squish the jellyfish. Look at him. Oh, is it a girl? No, I think Squish might be a girl actually. So, obviously, eight amazing tentacles. This is what Claire's going to start off by showing us because this is the easy peasy bit. I love the frill around the bottom. And the yarn's great because it just changes colour as you go along. So, it's not like you've got to crochet these different colours. That just happens for you all on its own. 
and and the eyes so everything you need is in here so in this one you've got the white yarn and the black and then you've got the multicolored. all of these are designed by mandy cameron and you know they work they work we know they work because claire's tested them so all of the um all of the kits are all on the website if you can just scroll down everything you need here 24.99 but um the good thing is as well is if you want to buy them for someone they come in a really nice gift box so so i mean that's a fantastic if you bought that for someone for christmas what a lovely kit or if you made it for somebody you could put it in the box and gift it to them made like that because it's a really really nice box lovely they're massive so shall we find out how to do them so welcome claire Hello, thank you for having me. Welcome to Yarn Lane for your first ever time. So tell us about how you got involved with Nitty Critters. So I went to one of these yarn shows, um, the, the Wool Monty in Sheffield, it will be the Wool Monty, and <laughs> Mandy was showing off these critters. And I love them, I love the size of them, I love how tactile they were, how squishy. And I said, oh, I'd love to buy the jellyfish. So oh, we sold out. Oh, can I buy the elephant? I sold out. <laughs> and it wasn't surprising because they're so amazing. Um, and so I just got talking to Mandy and I said that I love crochet. And she said, well, you know, we're always looking for people to make up the samples. And, and so I started making the samples and the more I got to know Mandy and then we started the test in the new range of the patterns. Mm. And, and it just grew from there. And I fell in love with them from the minute I saw them, the Nitty Critters. Um, mm. So I'm a big fan. They're well, I think everyone at home is today as well. They are lovely. Oh, the giraffe and the Ted are having a fight off at the moment, are the most popular. <laughs> <laughs> so, ha so what happens when you open your kit? What, where, where do we start? If we haven't done this before, what do we start with? Okay, so we get the instructions. Um, okay. And you've already mentioned, and this is really important, that these are in uh, UK terminology. Uh, most of the pattern is a double knit, uh, a double crochet. Right. Um, that's what the Americans call, what we call a treble, they call a double. Right. And what we call a double, they call a single. single. Yeah. So you really do need to get that right. Because if you do this in UK double, but you're actually using American and it's a treble, you're going to use up all your yarn very right. quickly. Right, so make sure so you do So it really is important told. to know that. <laughs> um, and then you just work your way through it. So do you want me to get you yeah. going? Yeah, right. yeah. So I've, I've chosen Squish, the jellyfish. Okay. And, and I think Squish is a really nice one for beginners. Uh, or underconfident crocheters because <laughs> um, you're not looking at changing colours like you said it already changes its colour on its own so you're not trying to change colour midway through um, it takes into account two different crochet techniques so when you're crocheting um, we either crochet in rows and we turn it into rows or we crochet in rounds and so squish is really nice because he does both and it gives you a chance to practice both crochet okay. in the rounds and in the rows so I'm going to I'm going to cast on, if you like, get this yarn onto the hook. Right. So the first thing we need to do is get this onto here. I'm just going to put that down. I'm a right-handed crocheter. And with my hand, I'm going to make like a bird here. Not this finger, my middle finger and my thumb. And this is like a worm. So the bird <laughs> eats the worm like this. OK? Got that. And with this finger, I'm now going to wrap the yarn round from my knuckle to my nail twice. So once twice and then the bird eats the worm again so we have two on my finger this is brilliant and if you can get to grips with this you're halfway to crocheting so those people say i can't crochet <laughs> try this first we're then going to move from the back to the front so over the top don't take it off your finger just move it to the front and then we're going to move from the back to the front again and this time all the way off your finger so the one you're left with on your finger is the one that goes on the hook. And this is an adjustable slip knot. So when you put it onto the hook, if you pull one side, it'll go smaller and we can make it bigger and a big loop. So this is quite important because you use the adjustable slip knot when we're doing the rounds of these. Right. So once we've got it onto the hook, we're going to make a chain of 30. So when we're crocheting, we wrap the yarn around the hook. And when you're a beginner, and then children do this quite a lot, you just lift it over the top and off the hook, which is exactly what we did with our finger. Yes, so this is great. So when you get going, round the hook over the top. Then as you get a little bit more into the technique of crocheting, mm. you can use the hook a bit more. So round the hook, and you use this part of the hook to draw the yarn through. 
So now we're going a bit quicker. We're drawing the yarn through. Wrap it round and draw it through. And we just do that till we've got 30 of them. There and we this go. is just one of the two techniques to make the whole jellyfish. Yes. So if you can, this is one. This mm -hmm. is this is when we're crocheting in a row. Okay. Uh, and then we're crocheting around. Right. So I'm going to do Brilliant. 30. One. And and if you look at this now, if I lay that down so you can see, mm. each of these stitches has a kind of V shape to it. And they're your stitches. When we're counting them, we don't count the one that's on the hook. We start below it. So for this, it's nice colour change. So the first one is that dark blue one that you can see at the top. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five light blue ones and a green one. So that it's really easy to count those V shapes as you're going down if you get stuck. So we need 30 of these. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to rapidly turn this into 30. <laughs> so this is where you just do that basic take, you just speed it up. So that's 15. So then this is really good for beginners. If you've not done, I'm talking to Claire and she's trying to count. 20. I was getting that people come to the <laughs> living room when I'm coaching, I go, don't talk, don't talk, I'm counting. <laughs> 25, do you know what this reminds me of? 27. When you go to one of these knitting craft um, clubs and everyone thinks, oh, wouldn't it be great to sit around having a cup of tea and chatting and yawning? Mm. You either, if you're drinking the tea and chatting, you ain't crafting. No. If you're crafting, then you're counting and it's silence. It's so I often silent. get people walking, I'll go, 26, 27. <laughs> yeah, it's true, isn't it? It's so true. <laughs> and that means don't speak to so me. So there we go, we've got 30. We've got a chain of 30. And now to make the tentacle, we just work as the row and we work back down it. So we start with the second one from the hook. Remember, we don't count the one that's on the hook here. So we miss that one out. It's a bit loopy. And we go one, two. So in the second one, we're going to do three double crochets into that second one from the hook. So I'll just remind people who've crocheted before of a double. So you put your hook through the stitch, pops out the other side, you wrap your run round the hook um, and pull it through. And we end up with two on the hook like that. And that's how I know it's a double. And this is why I don't understand American terminology. No, that couldn't be anything know. other than a double, could it, with two on it? No, I don't understand why they do that. If we've got something on the hook like this, mm. then we know we're halfway through the stitch and we've got to finish it off. So to finish that and get back to one on the hook, I wrap the yarn round and I pull it through those and we end up with one on the stitch. So I've done one double there and I need to do three into every stitch. So through, so we've got two on the hook, wrap it round, pull it through. And one more through, and that's where I'm using, did you see that I, I use the hook? Instead of wrapping it, this is where crochets, they say go really fast. Instead of wrapping it, literally wrapping it, I use the hook to literally pull the yarn through. And there you go, that's three. And I'm going to work my way along this chain and basically do three, three into in each every stitch. one as we go. So by the time you've done 30 of your chain, you're quite good at it. And if you get it wrong slightly, yeah. it's very easy to undo. So if you get to a stage where you think, oh, this looks a bit messy, just start again. Yeah. But and then also by the time you've done all three double crochets all the way down, that's 90. You're going to be brilliant at double exactly. crochet. Exactly. And that's why I really like Squish, because he gives you a chance to really practice um, these techniques. So if you're not a very confident crocheter, um, you can get to grips with it. And then when you've done one tentacle, you need to do seven more. <laughs> so who names these then? Uh, it's a Mandy names they, these. And oh, if okay. you go on to, um, I think they've got a website now, all of their own. They've all got a little story. Um, I'm not sure what their stories are for these. They do, think. yeah, they do. So where's, um, where's the squish box? Oh, these are squish box. What does it say? No, it does because it said it when I when I was looking yeah. at the description. Well, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it says on the instructions. But there is a little story about squish, and there were loads of nitty critters in this range. So we, uh, well, it was really hard actually because I had to just choose six. Couldn't really fit more on the desk. But then it was Claire's fault. She said you've got to do squish because <gasps> it's my favourite. So, favorite. seeing as she was coming on to demonstrate. That's why we've got seven. But there are loads of them. There's a llama, quite like the llama. There's a chimp. There's a lovely monkey. 
really want to have that one as well. There's other coloured bears, there's dogs. So um, another time we will do some more of them because they are lovely. So I just chose the ones I like, to be honest. You can do squirrels as well. Oh, yeah. they're the country companions. So they're mm. really good if you're not sure if the person you're buying for is a knitter or a crocheter because they come um, with needles and with a oh, hook and right. with a pattern. Next time then we'll do that. This is the best thing so about yarn um, is that I can just have a look at these things and think, well, I like that. I mean, it is great because I'm... the. All of you on the Yarn Lane fans are great because you give me lots of ideas and say, are you going to do this, are you going to do that? And I do always follow them up. I have a look and think, oh, well, should we do this? So it's really nice having all your feedback. So please do become a Yarn Lane fan. And it's great because I have to approve everyone so I can see when I got it. It tells me whether you knit or crochet and how you heard about us. But, um, but ask us questions because it's lovely. Oh, look, the giraffe has fallen over. The giraffe is in the lead. Jeffrey's in the lead. He's very big though, isn't he? Look at him. Look at him. He's lovely. But what's interesting, I'll get Claire to show you in a minute, is she has crocheted the giraffe, but using a smaller hook. Mm -hmm. And then these are a little bit smaller. So you can actually, if you use different hook sizes, you can make these a bit smaller as well. And that's really nice. But you couldn't make them too, if you made them any bigger than this, you'd run out of yarn. Yeah, that's about it really and also the holes would be too big and you don't want the stuffing to come out but yeah a message from Emma <laughs> finally I understand how to crochet thank you thank you I bought the unicorn and can't might to make it oh there you go Claire that's your job's really done. nice to your hear isn't done. it can I, yeah. can I just show them this then because I've done and I I'm, hope Julie's watching because Julie this morning on the fan page said, I can't crochet, I can't, I can't <laughs> try. And I said, we need to watch the show. So Julie, I hope you are watching and I hope that it's making sense. And if you are, message us and say, let me know. So I'm, I'm working on the tentacle here. Oh, he's going all spirally and you can see, now. Yes, now I'm about halfway up. Because I'm just going up one side and I'm doing three into each stitch. Oh, I see. So each stitch is sort of fanning out. Yeah. And um, because of that, it Do you want to put it down on the um, desk and then we can see the, the spike? Oh, I've, that's got, I've got these as well. Oh, we've got even more tentacles. So these are all my tentacles. You can see I've got seven. And this was the eighth one because then we're going to uh, attach it. Um, so there you go. And you can see them all. And if they're not, if you, when you finish them, if they're slightly different lengths, like these two look slightly different, just, just give it a pull. There you go. They're quite bouncy. And we can yeah, so I them. suppose they start off quite tight and yeah. then eventually, because the ones on here on Squish himself are looser, but I suppose they pull down yeah. a bit. Yeah, so this one's pretty much done now, this last uh, tentacle. Um, so we'll be moving on to the the next bit. Do you want me to carry yes, on with that? Yes, yeah. so Fabulous. Uh, now we've, we've, right, so now we've, we've got learned, our tentacles. Um, we've learned making a chain, we've learned double crochet, Right. we've learned how to make a tentacle. Just going to cut that off there. That's brilliant. And we're going to start with the round bit next. So this, that's so. his body. And does this apply to all of the animals? Yeah, so th what I'm going to do here is a really common technique that Mandy uses throughout these. Um, she does an awful lot in the round. Um, the elephant is pretty much all in the round, even his ears, uh, even his trunk, everything. Right, OK. Uh, so this is a really, really common um, and the giraffe. technique she uses. Yep. So we'll see in the in the base here using the eight millimeter hook, make an adjustable slip knot and chain two. Right. That adjustable slip knot is what we did at the beginning. The birds so, and the worms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and by chaining two, it's the bottom one. So we'll do that again. We've got our, our bird. Does the worm? Wrap it round twice. Back over the front and then back and all the way off. And this, because it's an adjustable slip knot, we can make it bigger and we can make it smaller. And this is what we're going to be crocheting into on round one. If you look at round one, it says 8DC, which is double crochet, into the second chain from the hook. It's basically this, that when you've done it, you can pull it tight and it'll right. close the circle. For those people who've been, so I'm going to do my adjustable slot, slip knot and chain two, and I'm going to show you that in a circle. 
for those people who've been crocheting for a while, they'll realize, they'll know that there's, there's um, a few different ways of starting off a circle. We can do this adjustable slip knot method, which is really nice method for beginners, or we can do what's called a magic ring, mm. and the Americans use the magic ring. This is pretty much the same thing as a magic ring. Okay. So if you, if you like a magic ring, you could do that. Or another way if people get started with um, circular crochet is to do a foundation ring. The problem with the foundation ring is it leaves a hole. So if you're doing a pattern that doesn't matter if there's a hole in the middle, that's fine. With these, because you need to make it sure there's not a hole in the middle of it. Yeah, so on the, that's the beginning. So that's where the elephant starts yeah. is what you're doing now. And the so same with the teddy as well. And, and with squish here, because that's, that hole needs to be closed, we need to know how to close that hole afterwards. Right. And that's what this adjustable slip, um, slip knot method does. So a bit fiddly but we are going to use this hole here and we're going to do eight double crochets into that hole so we use a hole put a hook through wrap the yarn round pull it through and I've got those two again wrap it round and I'm back to one and that's one double crochet just there we're going to do that again round and through that's two through Second. the hole pull the yarn through one two that's three, four, five. Yeah, and you go left just a little bit. There we go. Lovely. And it's really forgiving. You can give it a good pull. You can manhandle crochet, especially this bul bulky yarn. Right. It's I've so much easier with this because you. It's so much easier to count. And then once yeah. you've cracked it with this, when you then move down and use finer yarn, you know what you're looking for. Yeah. You do get used to using this chunky yarn though. So now, if I pull that tail, it closes the hole quite Lovely. nicely. And you, you don't have that hole in the middle. But now I need to count my stitches. And again, I don't count the one on the hook there. And I've still got those V shapes. Even though it's in a circle, I can still see the stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've only done seven. But because it's an adjustable snip knot, I can open it up a bit more and I can put an extra one into the middle. Now what happens with squish and pull it tight again? With squish and the others, they use, Mandy uses what's called a standard increase and you'll see this in so many crochet patterns. Um, and a standard increase is where I start with eight and then every round increases by eight. So the first time I'm going from eight to 16. So I'm going to do two double crochets into each one of those and it'll increase to 16. Yeah. The next time round, I'm only going to add eight. So I do one double crochet in the first, two in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth. And it keeps going in that style. Right, okay. So, one, so how, do we, how do we increase? So that is where, so <laughs> I do one into this stitch. Um, the yellow ones is my new stitch and the blue ones, this is why this yarn's so lovely. Um, so I pull it through the stitch, I've got two on the hook, round the hook and pull it through. I've only done one. In this next one, this blue one that you can see here, I'm going to put two double crochets into that. So the first one I go through. It's really good that you've got a different coloured yarn, it makes it so much easier to Just see, doesn't it? So it? you can see the old stitch is the blue one, the mm. new one is the yellow one. Let's just go right a little bit. Pull it through. That's it, perfect. Pull it through, run round, and now I turn into green. And then I'm going to go back into the same stitch. So okay. through that one. Now I've got my green as my new one. Pull it through, one, two. So I've done two into that one. I move to the next one, and I just do one. One into that one. I move to the next one, and I do two. So I'm alternating between one two. So it's two. just like, like with knitting, isn't it, where when you increase, you just yeah. do two in one. two into the same stitch, exactly. Um, so I've done a two, a one, I've done a two, and I know I started with a yellow one, <laughs> that's why this going on so good, but what you might want is a stitch marker, especially as people talk to you and you mm. want to put it down. So I'm going to do two into this one and then I'm going to put my stitch marker. 
And we have got, if you don't have stitch markers, we do have them on the website. So just go on there and onto the Yarn Lane website and search stitch markers and we've got several different sorts there. But they are really important when you're crocheting yeah. in the round like that. Yeah. It's very easy to forget where you start and finished. Yeah. You can just use a piece of yarn. Yeah. Loop through. But these little stitch markers are just really useful. So my stitch marker goes onto the one that's on the hook and I just leave it there till the end. And then this next one, this yellow one, and remember we start on the yellow, is the start of the next round. So I've now got 16. I've gone from 8 to 16. 16. Okay. And I now want to go up, this is where the maths comes in, add 8, I'm going to go to 24. Yeah. So I'm going to do 1 in this yellow one, 1 in this yellow one, and 2 in the green one. So now I'm going 1, 1, 2. One, one, so do two. you put your stitch marker in the first or the last stitch? Because everyone has a different way, don't I they? put it into the one that's before I get started on the round. So the end of the last yep. row. That is the last one I did. I put so, my stitch marker But in. some people do it in the first one and everyone seems to have a different way. And I always put mine in the first one, but I've started putting it in the last one now like that. So um, just got to remember. So long as you remember. And, and the great thing about this, when you're crocheting in the round, some patterns do a slip stitch into the first one yeah. of that round. That makes a seam that runs up the back of your mm. work. So by doing this method that Mandu's designed, you don't get that seam and it's a continuous spiral all just the way around, yeah. which is a really nice thing because you don't have that seam. But then you really do need the stitch marker because it's a yes, continuous spiral. Yes, you've got to remember where you are. So, so I mean, you can just use a piece of yarn, but the stitch markers are very inexpensive and they just clip on and just a really useful thing to have. So we're going to keep increasing. And it does this standard increase. So the next time round, I'm going to do three that just have a single. Oh, so you just alternate one increase, two increase. Yeah. Three. Okay. Um, but each time I'm only adding eight. So in this one, we do a double. You start to like a coaster now. That's our double. <laughs> the hood is made just like this. This is the base that we're making that ten the tentacles get attached to. And the hood is made very similar, but in order for it not to be a flat plate and for it to be that dome shape, Every now and again, you just do a, a round without increasing, and that makes it drop. So it goes from being a flat shape to the dome okay. shape. So it sort of pulls it in a bit. Yeah, yeah. which is again why squish is really nice, because mm. there's not lots of complicated stitches. It's just lots of repetition. Mm. Uh, it's a really good one for beginner. Um, well, it's the only way to learn, isn't it? People say, oh, I can't do it. You just have to keep, you just practice. Yeah. And then it doesn't actually take too long. I think people think, oh, you've got to be doing it for years. But you just come across new things and you pick up new techniques. Yeah. But it's I haven't practice. been doing it for years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only learnt in 2014. There you go. So. That's amazing. And so now I you're a pattern tester. Round. Yeah. And a TV demonstrator. How crazy is that? I know. There you go, so you can do it too. This time so. next year you'll all be on air with me. <laughs> So now I'm up to my next round. I did two then before the increase, didn't I? Let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So. It is useful to count every yeah. now and then. Yeah. Just to check. I think I should have had 24. Which is why people say oh, I can't count, but you need to, once, once you know how to, and with the chunky yarn, it's easy. If you just count Vs. Yeah. The, the thing with this yarn as well, you can feel it because it's so chunky. You can feel uh, where these holes are that you're going to go into. You can feel each stitch. So, And what happens if you do it wrong then? You have to pull it out. Just don't but, do it. But you can see how quickly we made this tentacle. If, mm. if, if we make a tentacle that quickly, it's, I, I find crochet is a lot more forgiving and knitting. I'm really sorry because you can pull it out. It's so easier to undo isn't yeah. it? Because you don't have to thread it all back on the needles as well. Exactly. I always find whenever I do something new I tend to do it once undo it and then have to do it again and the second time it's always better. Yeah so I do want to show you another technique that's used in these critters. Yeah go on then. Um, so th the base would continue into a big big Place, Which is what you, you like. do for all of them. So, like the back yeah. of the teddy is like so that. So, I'm going to put that aside. Is like that. They're all done. What in I'd love that to method. show you is a bit of uh, a technique on on the elephant. Okay. There's do. two things. So, I'm just going to put them there. So, this is an ear That's that was made then. in exactly the same way as we've just done with 
the right. base. It looks like a beret. It does look like a beret because we went flat, flat, flat. And then towards the end, um, we started to decrease, which gave it this bend in, this fold in. And you read the pattern for this, and it says attach the ears, fold them in half. And I've had quite a few people say, I don't understand how you attach the ears, because they look a little bit like um, Princess Leia. How, do they go like this? Oh, is that the head? Is this, that so this is the, the head. head and the trunk, right. This is okay. the head and the trunk, and it's one piece. So it starts at the bottom in exactly the same way, same rounds, and it grows bigger, gets smaller, and then it grows the trunk. So one piece, again, Brilliant. no extra sewing on of mm. features that could come off, it's all integrated. So add in the ear, when we've done it, we just fold it in half like this. In half Brilliant. like this. And you can see now that makes, that. of course that's an ear, that makes more sense. Of course it's an sense. ear, it's exactly like an ear. But, but it it's a double-sided ear, which is yeah. lovely, isn't it? It's a big, fat, chunky, you could, as a child, I imagine I'd hold his ears at night. Definitely. Or carry him by his ears. Yeah. So you can see now, ears. you can sew on so many that animals. ear, one either side of the nose, mm. and, and it's obvious. But it, when you've finished it, especially if, uh, this is another really good one, when you, you're happy with squishing, you're a bit more confident, because it's got a few more parts to it, mm. um, then when it's, it, it's finished like this and you're not quite sure how I attach it, it folds in half. And that um, decreasing at the end is what gives it that. And then you just nice sew it on. And you just sew it on. So there's his ear. And, and the, the next thing I really want to mm. show you is okay. the feet. So the feet here, I'm going to get my Ollie Elephant pattern. They're so sweet. They look like little shoes. They are so sweet. <laughs> little shoes. So, let me get my yarn. Well, I've made, the lead. I've made three already. Me. I've made three, and I'm going to make a fourth one. Okay. And you can see in the finished product, there are four distinct feet, but as you say, that they're all crocheted straight into the body. So there's no cut feet so coming off. So there's no feet coming off. So. But it also makes it look smoother as well, doesn't it? It just... It, it looks look like something you would buy, which isn't always yeah. a good thing. So it's nice to craft things, but they have been designed in a way that they it looks just very smooth and lovely. Really, there's a lot of time and effort that have gone into these. But I guess because Mandy's designed them, you've checked them, you've thought it all through, then you get that really professional finish. Because so often you buy kits and you get the instructions and think, I have no idea what you're talking about. But honestly, these instructions are fantastic. They really make sense. I wonder how long it, how long does it take to make one? I'm talking to Claire, she's oh, counting. <laughs> so, it depends, doesn't it? If you're going to mm. sit one night and you're just going to plough your way through mm. it with a box set on the telly, yeah, yeah. you could probably get squish made in the really? weekend, so I think. So if you've think. got a box set, a coffee. Yeah, oh, perfect. And a nice tub of chocolate. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the way to I'm do it, isn't it? I'm thinking raining outside, fire on, telly on. Oh, sounds great. Oh, do you know, that's yes. per this time, this... This year, that's exactly what we've been looking it's for, isn't it? Do you know, it's perfect. It? I sometimes I come home from work think, brilliant, brilliant, quickly eat my tea because I'm going to crochet all evening. My my <laughs> husband is uh, works for West Midlands Ambulance Service, mm. and when he's on nights, <laughs> brilliant. So he's gone on nights. The mm. kids are in bed. Love Let's get the crochet get out the, and yeah, the box exactly. set on. And then someone comes home, you think, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've got this one started. Sorry, I rattle through getting going because I really want to show you how they yeah, stitch that's, together. Yeah, because we've done that already with the jellyfish. The, exactly, the and it is exactly the same. So this time, to make these feet, it, you do nine double crochets into the original one. And oh. then... I'm going to put Rosie Rabbit there. Look at Rosie Rabbit. She's so cute, isn't she? I like her little... She's got really long floppy ears. They're gorgeous, aren't they? They're so sweet, but it's a real baby toy. Again, Little the legs girl. that you see there with um, Rosie, that looks sewn on, but it's not. It's crocheted in as oh, you build they? the body. And again, they, they wow. are attached. So you know they're going to end up in the right place as well. But that's really important, especially when you're making them for children. And even her tail, I thought it was a pom-pom, but it isn't. It's a, it's a proper crocheted tail. It is. But this is what a lovely gift for a new baby. You can make a little dress as well, couldn't you? Yeah. So, right, 
I'm not going to see the rabbit and knit it and sew it a dress. I'm just going to put that one to one side because I do want to show you how these attach together. So it tells you when you've done the fourth one, <laughs> don't fasten off, continue as followed. So place your marker on the stitch in the hook. So I'm just going to undo this one and pick it and put it back on my hook. So you crochet all four separately? All four, but when you get to the last one, don't cast off, don't fasten it off. Like I've done this one really tightly. There we go. Just unpick that. Put this one back on the hook. There we go. So, put your marker on, because you need to know where you're beginning. Work eight double crochets on the first leg. So we do one, two, three, four. You just go forward just a little. Five. That's it. Perfect. Six. Then we can get him really close, you see. Okay. I am going to run out of yarn because I'm just going to do a quick tying in. And if you'd have not cast off, you wouldn't have to do this because you'd still have it. That was six, seven, eight. Now what you do is you bring the next one alongside, take another leg, starting with a stitch after you've fastened off, work one into the next ten. So we're now putting these two legs together. So I'm now going to pick this leg up. So from the legs, the body arrives? Yeah. Okay, it's not, so you're not attaching the legs to the body. No. You're it, making the body from the legs. And you do ten. Three. Four. Oh, hold on. That one's got, I've used the wrong, the wrong bit of yarn there, haven't we? Goodness me, making that a right leg, mess that of that, aren't I? To be part of it. That leg did want to be part of it. So we do that 10, and then we do this 10, and you make a row of feet. Right, okay. And when the row has been made, they stand up, one, two, three, four, all attached into a cross. And then you go all the way around, look at that there. Okay. You go all the way around the outside of them all for the rest of the body. So if you have a look underneath there, you can see one, two, three, four, mm. and then the crochet has carried on all the way around the tops of the legs. And then when does the tail come in? When you get to round, let's have a look at this. So you go all the way down. Love his tail. Um, it does say at some point you do the tail, and it's just you get to this round here and you, you chain all the way out. And then go back along the chain, just like so we did with Squish. So the tail's not sewn in. He is part no, of it. No, he's part it. of so it. So they are super all safe. All the way back. And then Brilliant. carry on going round. So the tail, so you sort of make the tail as you go along? Make the Brilliant. tail as you go along. Because that is the worst part, isn't it? Is all the sewing together. Yeah. Uh, I did uh, the nativity one year, and honestly, it took me longer to stuff it and sew it together than it, it did to actually knit it. And then I didn't really want to do it then. I couldn't be bothered. Yeah. So Sammy's got a, a few more extra pieces to sew on. If you look at Sammy Sloth, okay, let's have a look so at him. So he's got his eyes and his nose and his mouth and, it, and the, the sort of face. Okay. So he's got different is, colours. Yes. He's got different yarns. He's got you sew them on. So if you're after a bit more of a challenge, you're a bit more of a, a crocheter, and you think, okay, I think Squish is too simple for me. I love him, but I, I want to go for something a bit more of a challenge than Sammy. So there really is something for everyone. Sophia Unicorn, if you look at her mane, those twists and her tail. Sophia's in the lead. And that, if you look at her twists, that's just how we did Squish's tentacles. Ah, oh, so if we look at, yes, I see what you mean. So it is just three double crochets in each yeah. chain. And are they all done, I suppose they're all done, are they then sewn in? Uh, with Sophia, I, do you know, I haven't got the pattern on me. To, I can't confirm that one because um, I didn't make that one. Sophia, I think, is the only one I've never done. Oh. So many people love unicorns. I'm not a unicorn fan. Not a unicorn fan. It's really fan, bad, isn't no. it? I'm not. I am. Um, well, maybe you're either a giraffe or a unicorn fan. They are so lovely. I love this. She's so pretty, isn't she, though? She That's is. why she's a girl. She's gorgeous. She's a very, she is gorgeous. very pretty. Maybe and, it's the next um, on the list. She has eyelashes. Because she's so pretty. That's, so your, your features, all the eyes, you get two crochet hooks in the kit. 
Okay. Uh, so your features, the eyes, are made with a smaller one. Right. And what if you want to wash them? Because the sphere are may not stand, stay white forever. <laughs> This is true, isn't it? Um, so it's you can just put them in the washing machine? Uh, yeah, 30 degrees, uh, really gentle. Mm. Um, you know, I'd probably put them in a pillowcase myself, personally. Right. OK. But all these yarns have been tested. OK. Um, and, and, you know, the, the safe, they've got your safety testing, the, the stuffing has got the safety testing. Uh, so you can wash them. So you just pop them in the machine, but gently. Be gentle. And then hang them on the line or put them oh. on the radiator, maybe. Because they will, after, I mean, you know, toys like this, they're loved, aren't they? They are. They're loved and they're cuddled and they're dropped on the floor. Do you want me to show you uh, the different size hooks then as well? Yes. Because we said we've got the yes, giraffe, please. haven't we? Um, yeah, so we've still got about five minutes to go. So, that's so good. these, oh, that's this amazing. is the two different sizes. So is the big one Jeffrey. the one that I've, I've got? I've not put his eyes on this one yet, but... Um, so you get an eight millimeter hook. Mm. I crochet quite tight. I've got quite a tight tension to my crocheting. So I actually go up a hook size and, and the hook I've been using is actually a number nine. Um, but you could go down to a number six or you could go right. up to a number 10. There's enough yarn in there. And this is just shows the difference if That's you're gonna amazing, use different hook sizes. Um, so and there's a real so there's a real range there. I'd say down to maybe a six and up to a ten. Okay. Um, but the only difference is going to be in the size. Um, so that's really nice to see. That's Jeff quite a big difference as well, isn't it? You get a whole family. It's like mummy and me, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So buy two kits. Even and better. Another hook, <laughs> and then you can have mummy and me giraffes. Indeed. Off oh, this. They say, but you could do that. I suppose that would work with all of them, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I've made um, hippos in different sizes, and that's when I realised that my tension's quite tight. Tension isn't really important with these. No. Um, so uh, it's not like an item of clothing that you've got to get the tension <laughs> Your really right. Your does not need to fit you. No, um, it's a bit more forgiving. Um, and I realised my hippos were, were quite small. Um, so I went up from a, a size 8 hook to a mm. size 9 hook. So it comes with a size 8. It's designed around a size 8. Um, but you can go down a size or up a size and have a little play. And a, like you say, if your tension's quite loose, mm. um, then maybe move down a size. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, as long as you're sort of, it's, you, you'd have to think about if you went too big and you ran out of yarn and yeah. you've got to make sure that the, the holes aren't too big for stuffing it. But it is something that you can yes. play with and adapt. It'd be nice to have a mummy and a baby elephant, wouldn't it? I think I'd oh, quite it like would. That. Uh, and your elephant is designed that they can either sit how you've got it, so yeah. on its bottom with its head like this, or we can put it on its feet. Oh, can, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, so, you, oh, yeah, so they can like sit like that with their feet up. Uh huh. Or they can sit like that. It's just lovely. This is just like, yeah, if you, if you knew somebody was having a baby, that would be a lovely gift for them, wouldn't it? Mm, I know, I've got to put them in, back in the box and, <laughs> <laughs> and set them back, having lost them. Mm, they are, they, but they're just. I think it's because the yarn is very soft. It that is. not the appeal. This yarn, so a lot of people ask me actually how I hold the yarn and the mm. hook. And, and that's a very, it's a personal thing. You get to know it yourself. I tend to hold it really close to the piece. When you're really first start crocheting, it can be really hard um, to, to get going because there's nothing to hold on to but this grows so quickly because of the thickness of the yarn you've suddenly got something to hold on to and I wrap the heart yarn around my finger like this so it, it does tend to rub across my finger like this uh, and some yarns that can start to hurt after a while and it can really hurt your finger mm. and it can dry it out but this yarn's never done that it's so soft um, you can crochet uh, for hours and, and it doesn't rub against your finger or against my finger while I crochet. So how do you hold your yarn? Because everyone I've, we've had so many different people on air now and they, everyone holds their hook and their yarn slightly differently. Some like a pencil, some like a dart. I like it like a pencil. I kind of almost put my finger on like I am writing. So okay. yeah, I do use it like a pencil and I wrap it around my first finger and I, I hold the piece that I'm working on quite tight. Um, so I literally have it on the other side and it literally hooks it so you can see the action of the hook there mm. i'm not necessarily wrapping it anymore i'm more hooking the yarn yeah and pulling it through to the other side and i think because i hold it wrapped around my finger as as i as my hook goes through the stitch 
it is literally just on the other side so I can catch it and hook it and pull it through and I've got my stitch on the hook and then wrap so, it. So and when you teach beginners do you sort of teach them wrapping it first? I try to but I'm really conscious that that doesn't come naturally, it only comes with practice. So I taught my my cubs, uh, my son's cubs troop. To crochet? Uh, yeah, Brilliant. we had it on Zoom, we've been doing Zoom during, uh, during okay. lockdown. Um, and the first session, all we did, and, and my son's eight, so this is seven, eight, nine-year-olds. Mm. Um, all we did was learning how to do that chain that we did at the beginning, and we turned it into friendship bra bracelets or scarves for teddies. Mm. Um, and they were lifting it over. Uh, and that's fine, because they're going to get right. going. But after a while, it's going to take them ages, and you start to you start to think there's got to be a quicker way of doing this and that's with practice when you start to really use the hook oh, okay. properly. Like and to you, start with. Then yeah, you, whatever you works it, for you. There is you no right or wrong. No, I just can't remember, yeah. you know, when you have to go back, well, how, if you were going to, if someone asked me to teach them, I, oh, I'm not sure where I'd start, but I guess that's a really good idea, isn't it, is that you yeah. lift the yarn over. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not, so this one again, I'm, I can't remember where I was up to for this, and now, if I'm counting, to figure out what stitch, what was I up to? I've got, I don't count the one on the hook. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Don't Never talk to one. people while they're counting. But then I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I wanted sixteen. So one in there. And I can look down my pattern, see where 16 was, and I can count the rounds because it's so chunky. I can see one, two. So I've obviously done two rounds of eight there, and I'm on number two. So, so I can count as I go. And then I do the standard increase. So, so these feet, they only go up one, two. And then, because we're not increasing anymore, we're just doing rows of... Um, so you're making 18. a crocheted bowl. You're making a little bowl. <laughs> and, and when you stop increasing and just start going round and round, that's when then it grows this mm. in this direction and not just out. So, it, so, so that's basically how bowls are made then. You yeah. go round and then you just keep to the same number and go up. If you can do that, you can do any of these patterns, honestly. Well. So Jeffrey Giraffe, his legs are exactly the same as um, Ollie Elephant. They're just mm. longer. Wow. Well, You're thanks so much, Clay. You have really, that's been fantastic. You've really explained. We've had loads and loads of messages. You have to read them all saying, <laughs> oh, you've really explained it. So when you come off, we'll have to, you have to read them all. And, and, and Claire's promised to come on our fan page as well. So I've invited her to come on so she can um, help you out and you can ask her questions. So thank you so much. And you, you must you. come back soon. I would love to. We've got a picture from Linda. And she's done some new crochet. Oh, look. It's her dogs. Oh, it's, I've got a cocker spaniel, so I'm particularly. Look at those. <gasps> Mine looks like the gold, the um, ready coloured one on the right. Oh, that's so lovely. Oh, Linda, those are beautiful. Thank you, Linda. Please do send us your photos and your comments and put them on the fan page as well. So let's have a quick recap to finish off. So I've got the elephant in front of me. So there's the elephant kit, the elephant. I'm not going to show you all the boxes. I'll show you the elephant box. That's what it looks like. It's a lovely box. So if you're thinking about buying it as a gift, it is a really nice gift box. We'll give it a quick 360. There we go. Um, and everything, I mean everything, the instructions, all the yarn, the stuffing, the hooks, everything is in there to make the elephant. All the kits are all $24.99, so have to, they're not different. Um, and the next one is Toggle Ted, because I like him. There's the teddy. But you can see how big they are, can't you? I've got too much stuff in my way. Look, look how big he is compared to me. Woo! Put your hands in the air. <laughs> He's lovely, isn't he? So everything you need for him is in the kit, even the black for his um, little paws as well. Then we've got Sophia the unicorn. She's so pretty. Her and the giraffe are the most popular. So if I twiddle around, look, you can see she's got um, she's got jellyfish tentacle mane and tail. So it's lovely. But you can see how easy that was to do. But because it's this multicoloured yarn, it's really pretty. It works. You don't have to think about that. And she's also got pretty feet as well. Pretty feet, pretty mane. And then she's got a horn and ears as well. And eyelashes. But everything you need is in there. 
she's so sweet um and then rosie the rabbit she's so pretty she really is a little girl she's got a little pink nose and again the yarn is in for that nice big floppy ears i really like her um the little legs and she's got look and i'll turn around so you can see look she's got a little tail it's not a pom-pom it's actually a crochet tail as well it's really sweet isn't it and it's got a little bit of stuffing in it as well to make it squishy then we've got jeffrey is our Jeff. All right, Jeff. All right, Jeff. Yeah, is is Jeff. You can't take him down the pub though. But remember, you know, if you want to make the mummy and me Jeff, Jeffrey and Georgina, um, just buy two kits and crochet one with a smaller hook. And you can have Jeffrey and Jeffrey Junior. But this could be a boy or a girl. Whereas Sophia is definitely a girl, Jeffrey could be Geraldine. That's up to you. Um, and then, the finally, oh, I've missed the dress because Squish was sitting up here. Not finally, penultimately, we have Sammy the Sloth, who's lovely. Look, I don't know if they're hands or claws. I like to think they're hands. Um, but you could sew them together. So often if you wanted to have him hanging off a bed or for a child, if they wanted to hold them like that and put them over their head, you could, he had elastic bands on them, but you could sew them together. But everything you need, so you've got the, this really squishy blanket yarn in the um, beige colour for his body, but you've got the cream yarn and the brown and the black to make him. He's even got like little nostrils as well. So it's all there. He's really sweet, isn't he? And all the stuffing. And finally, squish squish the jellyfish look who is a girl apparently although i don't know why i think it could be a boy as well because it's blue but that's really lovely um anyway thank you so much for joining us today um we are back on friday with woolly chic and she's um helen from woolly chic's in on friday for yarn lane doing some beautiful shawls with her gorgeous hearts easy on so yeah that's going to be a really really nice show she's using some lovely pure wool shawls that you're going to enjoy that will be friday at 12 o'clock obviously we've got sewing stream between but yarn lane will be back on friday um thanks so much for joining us and we will see you soon thank you <laughs>